Okay, class, today we'll continue to look at a linear moment equation in stationary control volume. And today we'll look at a problem when velocity is not uniform, velocity will change with location. As a result, we need to evaluate the integration. Okay, and then we start with uh, general linear moment equation. So when we derive this equation, it shows in this slide, we we don't apply, we don't need any assumptions. So this valid universally for all fluid. And to simplify this equation, so we make assumption when it's a steady flow. The first term becomes zero. And before, uh, in last two lectures, we have assumed velocity is a constant. When velocity, when velocity is a uniform, or constant and we don't need the integration and we'll end up with a we just look at the second term the second term will become rho v square a and cosine theta this theta come from the angle between the velocity uh, and the area okay it depends on how many openings on the surface and then we will have multiple momentum flow rate uh, sum them up or equals all the forces on the other side. All right, so today we'll look at a problem that when velocity is now uniform, when velocity is now uniform, we need to evaluate the integration and we'll look at x, y, z, three different directions. And for, for example, along x direction, this equation will become v x and then rho v the a terms and this term is a mass flow rate and equals all the forces acting along x direction so we'll apply this equation to solve two problems and then i will leave time to you to work on a quiz problem so here we look at the first problem the first problem is calculate momentum flow rate in two plate and one plate is moving that's the top plate moving at speed v and the bottom the the plate is uh in stationary and the problem is calculate the momentum flow rate through the cross section area and the in-depth width of the cross section is w okay for this problem and for momentum flow rate, we know that in linear motor equation, the second term this term is momentum flow rate. So we just need to evaluate this equation on cross area one. So in this area, we know that velocity uh, is u. So we need to figure out u as a function y so based on the information we have we know that when y equals h velocity is uppercase v so because of a non-slip boundary condition and again because of non-slip non-slip boundary condition when y equals zero which has a bottom velocity must be zero and then in between based on the velocity profile here we know that the velocity is a linear, uh, lin well, linear change with y. As a result, we know that u y will be a function of y, and with the coefficient that will be the slope. The slope here will be v over h. So that's the velocity we get. And the next step is so we put u to replace v in the momentum equation so that will lead to u and rho u and notice that velocity along the same direction area so we can drop the product uh, this is da here we can drop the dot product of the vectors calculation so now what we have here is rho u square da and the integration is a uh, Cross area A. We noted that the into the into the depths the uh, the cross section is W. So we can further write into a double integral into a single integral. 
So w times dy and the equation from 0 to y as we substitute y uh, u as a function of y which will lead to v over h and y squared then w dy I will pull out all the integral, uh, all the constant. So what we have here is a rho v square h over h square and w, and the integration is a y cube over three from zero. Oh, the integration here is a from zero to h. Okay, and then we evaluate that. What we have is y over three rho v square w. H. And that's the momentum flow rate through the cross area with a linear uh, velocity profile. Okay, now let's look at the second problem. The second problem is that we have water going to the device vertically, and the water will come out with a half circle uh, and spread out horizontally. And the information we have here is we know the uh, volume flow rate Q, and we also know the geometry, uh, the sprayer, and the, it's a half circle with radius R, and the thickness is H, and the water will come out uh, horizontally and with the same velocity magnitude, but along different direction. That means it's uh, radially outside. Okay, for this problem, and we first need to set up the control volume. So the control volume will include the device. And this is our control volume. And also we set up our coordinate. And the horizontal surface will be our coordinate because the problem is determine the resultant horizontal action force. So we set uh, x, x, y on the horizontal surface. So required to hold the nozzle in stationary. And to calculate the force, we need the linear moment equation. So for linear moment equation, what you have is uh, integration inside of the control volume for momentum. So the momentum rate the momentum change, the, the rate change of momentum within the control volume. And then also second term is momentum flow rate over the control surface and equals all the forces acting on the control volume. So this is a sum up symbol. So calculate all the forces acting on the control volume. So the first thing we want to check is whether there is a steady flow so that we have constant flow rate in the velocity will not change with time which lead to steady flow. Then the first term is gone and then we're all left with uh, momentum flow rate. Oh, momentum flow rate, which are the, on the left side of the equation. The other side is all the forces acting on the control volume. So, and then the problem with calculate the moment of flow rate. Well, notice that this is a vector equation. So we would have two equations along x and y equation separately. So let's look at Along x equation, along x equation, what we have is the x component and then times mass flow rate. So rho v a, that's just mass flow rate. Or you we use mass flow rate m dot to represent represent mass flow rate because this unit is mass per unit time. And that's the total momentum flow rate over the control surface, and that will be forces, the action forces along x direction, because that's the only force acting on the control volume, 
it's a horizontal surface. Now the problem is calculate the momentum flow rate. So let's first look at uh, Vx. So you have to evaluate it, and we'll choose. Uh, we'll look at. We'll use a polar coordinate. So the polar, polar coordinate will start from the center, and then we we'll assume that. Let me change the color. I assume that. There is an angle here. We actually pick up angle theta, and then we extend this angle by d theta. It's a very small angle, and then we'll get a small area, which is dA, and we'll evaluate the velocity on this small area, and then we can calculate momentum flow rate on the small area, and then we use integration. That means sum up all the small areas and then we'll lead to the total momentum flow rate. So on this small area, we know that velocity will point radially, it will along our direction. So this is the velocity. And what we care is, is a is a x direction component. So it's accurate x along x direction, this vx will be equals v times that angle. Cosine that angle. If you look at that, that angle is also equal to this angle here. This small angle is a complement angle of theta, so which is pi over two minus theta, or equals v sine theta. And that's vx, and this its direction sine determined by the coordinate we choose. So Vx will along the same direction as the coordinate we choose, so it's a positive value. And then for Vx, and then we evaluate momentum flow rate, uh, mass flow rate, m dot. So mass flow rate, we know that is a v rho Va, and the velocity is along our direction, so normal to the surface. So the dot product will lead to V times A. And it's a sign. You determine whether the, flow, uh, the mass flow rate is uh, in or out. So if it's positive, if it's out, it's positive. If it's in, that will be negative. So for this, for a small area dA, the flow is out, so it's positive. And the positive Vx times a positive mass flow rate, and then in total, we will have Rho v square a sine theta and positive. And the integration uh, all over the area, dA. Okay, then we will express dA in terms of theta. Uh, so if you look at the small area we choose, we know that on one side is h, and the other side, the other side, this side is length of the arc formed by this small angle d theta. So this side will be r times d theta. So d a will be one side is h, the other side is r d theta. So which will lead to c s rho v squared a sin theta and then h times r d theta and the theta if you look at the area the theta will start from 0 to pi so we evaluate the integration we'll get fx so uh, we'll move here and we'll pull out we'll pull out all the constant Rho v square. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not. A. There's not no a here. This is da, right? So if you look at that, rho v square sine theta is come from multiplication of rho v a and times v x, right? So and then move on to the top side and then to evaluate the integration. What we have here is. Integration about sine theta 
and d theta. So we continue evaluate this integration will become cosine theta and form pi to zero, and which is cosine pi minus cosine zero. And we know cosine pi is one, cosine zero is negative one. So which into this is one, this is negative one, and one minus negative one is two. So eventually we'll have two times rho v square h times r that is fx well you may also notice that velocity is not given the problem so what we're really given is a q but we can find velocity based on volume flow rate we know that the q equals v times area if you look at the area uh, which is uh, half circle, half circle pi r and then times h, and then times the velocity. That's, this is the area. And then we can calculate velocity equals q over pi times r h. And then you plug this v into the equation, and that will be the final answer for fx. So the action force on x direction required to hold the nozzle in stationary. And well, that's on x direction. You might also need to evaluate the y direction. For y direction, if you no notice that it's symmetrical along y direction, then uh, there are two quarters and they will cancel each other along y direction, and then Fy will be zero. If you didn't, you cannot find the symmetrical relation, you can. Again, to uh, apply linear moment equation with Fy equals an integration of Vy rho V dA, and then evaluate that equation, and you will find that Fx equals zero, Fy equals zero. Well, here's a quiz problem. Uh, so you can form a team to work on it and make a summation after you. Uh, finish it. So the deadline again will be the main night. And the problem here is so you have very similar to the second example problem. You have uh, water going vertically into the device and then come out along y direction. See here's the coordinate. The coordinate here is we have y direction, we have x direction. So velocity is going to y direction, but this velocity, let's call the velocity is v and this velocity will change with x. And see the velocity profile is given, so linearly change. And then the maximum velocity is 10 meter per second. When x equals zero, the velocity is zero. So based on the two information, and then you can figure out v, v as a function of x. So you need to figure out v as a function of x. And then use that information to calculate uh, the moment for, moment of flow rate, and then the action force to hold this device in place. Okay, so that's all for today, and then good luck with the quiz.